The President of the United States is strong. If we lose freedom here, there's no place to escape to. This is the last stand on Earth. A solid meeting with, um, with uh, the, uh, they make a very good point. Here's the deal. A guiding light during tough times. The cost of freedom is always high, but Americans have always paid it. And one path we shall never choose, and that is the path of surrender or submission. They're bombarding him with questions because they think he's still in, he still has the mental adequacy to like the mental fortitude to like relay what this what they're asking him but he's not there there's no one home man if you open his head right now it's a, it's a, a bunch of monkeys playing tambourine in there he's gone he's too old for the seat he's way too old he's not he's not he's not okay man it's not funny but when you put someone like this in a public office someone that's responsible for like the direction of your country then he has to be scrutinized just like everybody else he has to be criticized like everybody else Mr. President, give me a break man <laughs> Did you overreact? respected on the global stage we will not eradicate violent conflict in our lifetimes there will be times when nations acting individually or in concert will find the use of force not only necessary but morally justified <laughs> is he asleep? <laughs> He's asleep. He's asleep. Are you serious? Let me take it back a little bit. How'd you go from this to this? <laughs> He's tired. He's tired. He's tired, man. You gotta let him go home and sleep, man. Just tired, man. He's old. He's old, man. He's, oh, God. Why are they doing this to him, man? This is elder abuse at this point. This is elder abuse. Let him go home and relax. God, I'm sorry for laughing. I'm sorry for laughing, but oh man, my sense of humor is. Uh, geez, I'm going. I'm, I, I've already made peace with it. I'm going to hell, man. I've already made peace with it. Uh, <laughs> I can't work him up. Above all, the commander Ooh. in chief. Here's what drives the driver uh, in the states that are affected. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by go. You know the you know the thing. Oh no, he's gone. Sky News Digital Originals presents the decline of a president. This is not a skit. This is not like Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live. Is this real? He fell off stage. The president of America fell off stage. Joe Biden's decline is taking center stage for all the world to see. And legitimate questions are now being asked about the man who is hoping to be president of the United States again. He What's can't do it again. Is that almost every leading Democrat in the country, and of course the Republicans, are talking about it. Uh, dinner parties in Washington and New York are filled with discussion about 
Um, is Joe Biden ready to run for president in 2024? Is it a political risk? And is it also a risk for the country? Uh, should he run again? And if he wins, he will be 86 years old at the end of his second and last term. Hillary Clinton, who was the Democratic nominee in 2016, says it's a legitimate issue. Uh, the Washington Post says it's a legitimate issue. Uh, lots of people believe that Joe Biden has slipped a bit since he last ran for president and certainly has slipped since 10 years ago when he became when he became a vice president the second time. And the problem is we have only his own word and the word of those who work for him and are dependent on him for their livelihood and their power that he's... Look at this bunch of old people in office. They belong in a home. Look at Janet Yellen. Look at this. These people control the finances of the country, meaning pretty much the finances of the world. But they're old. They're decrepit. Look at them. They belong in some sort of old people's home. Not running the highest office in politics in the world. What? Fine. Um, yes, foreign leaders will say he looked sharp and all of that. But, you know, obviously that's not the full measure of the man. Previous presidents, not all, but some have taken cognitive tests. Uh, Donald Trump did when he was president. Cognitive tests are simple tests that uh, measure your mem short term memory ability, your ability to comprehend. He's not going to take that. Biden is not going to take that. They're not going to let him take that. The Democrats are not going to let him take that because he knows it's just going to expose them for being frauds. They're not going to let him take that. Your ability to reason. And um, anyone who is running for an important position should pass those tests. Joe Biden has not taken those tests. He, he got a physical it. at Walter Reed Medical Center with Navy physicians in February. Uh, there was a physical report on his health, but no mention of any mental tests. There were none taken. And his doctor, the White House physician, refused to take any questions from the media whatsoever. He doesn't have what it takes. I don't, I don't know what's going on, but he's got some issues related to his age, uh, some cognitive decline. Uh, he's confused most of the time. He doesn't know where he's at, what he's doing. He slurs his speech. He shuffles when he walks. Uh, he's just, uh, it doesn't inspire confidence in our in our allies. Our allies don't, they don't uh, respect us and, and uh, trust us anymore. They're laughing. Everyone's laughing at y'all. Everyone. And our adversaries don't respect us or fear us anymore. And that's just a, a recipe for disaster here in the United States. President Trump had a cognitive test uh, because the far left and the liberal press here in the United States were... Uh, up in arms demanding that he have a not only a physical exam but a but a cognitive assessment of some sort and i was his physician at the time we did that he passed it with flying colors and i think that if anyone needs that same test now it's joe biden he's not doing it does joe biden have some sort of you know mental incapacity i don't know but what? they also give you know elderly people in the retirement homes ice cream as well and he seems to always eat ice cream so they <laughs> <laughs> I, no i'm serious but they give him a lot of problems. As, as if he is an elderly um, patient. So, so I don't know. Guys, when, we, when I watch this video, I don't like Joe Biden's politics at all, but I hate to see this happen because yeah. it's really a stain on America. I mean, I think that our, the, the least we should ask from our presidents <clears throat> is that they be able to conduct themselves without tripping and stumbling and always hitting their head, falling up the stairs. I mean, it's really just, it's it's a negative reflection on America because if the world is, is being run by America, if we're one of the thought leaders of the world and our own president can't even walk, it's just kind of a bad stain on the whole world. I expect these fellows are going to uh, uh, eventually judge me on my merit, not on my age. As a career politician, Joe Biden always had ambition for high office. He became vice president after- He's been old for a long time though. Wasn't that just a black and white footage? That, wow, I'm sure that was like way before I was even born. He's been in power for a very long time and he's been old forever. Barack Obama was elected. What was the last time anyone saw black and white TV? Joe Biden has faced a number of personal tragedies in his life. The tragic loss of a wife and child in a car accident. Wow. And later in life, his son Bo to brain cancer. Wow. That, one, that boy really looks like him. Answer. President Biden hasn't been without his own health battles either. Facing serious brain aneurysms in the 1980s. 
I, uh, I had two cranial aneurysms. And they literally had to take the top of my head off. I mean, they take a saw and they cut your head off and, and go in to find the artery that is one was leaking, the other that hadn't before Ooh. it burst. There's this, those of you who are docs know there's a, every, every, procession, every profession has their sick jokes. The joke among, among docs is, how do you know someone's uh -huh. had an aneur cranial aneurysm? On the autopsy table. Only 20% of the people haven't even get to the table. Well, one of the fascinating things is that the second operation, after the first one, which was a bleed, and they gave me a relatively low chance of surviving. I remember going down, the doc asking the doc, and we, you know, you're counting the ceiling tiles, and you're heading into the operating room, and you, a lot of you have been there. And uh, I said, Doc, what, what are my chances? I had two great neurosurgeons. And I'll never forget, I will not mention his name, he's one of the leading neurosurgeons in the... In the in the world. Um, he said, uh, Senator, for mortality or morbidity? And I'm thinking, <laughs> no, I swear to God. I'm thinking, oh, gee, you know, well, I said, let me put it this way. You can tell it's very chatty chappy. You know, he's got like a gift, a uh, gift of the gab and all that. Knows how to talk. You know, he's got the gifts of, of, of words. But not now, though. Probably when he was younger, when he had its, uh, his wits about him. But right now, I think all the brain surgery is, is, is taking his toll. He's too old. It's sad. It was a long road to the operating room. I said, sister, absolutely true story. I said, what are my chances of getting off this table and being completely normal? He said, well, your chance. He tells the best stories, by the way. Joe Biden tells the best stories, hands down. Chances of living are a lot better. <laughs> and I said, okay, what are they? He said, well, they're, they're, they're in the 35 to 50 percent range. And I thought, well, seriously, I was a born optimist. I said, well, hell, that means 35 out of 100, 50 out of 100 make it. I, was going, I might as well be the one. I said, what's the most likely thing that will happen if I, uh, if, if I live? But what? He said, well, the side of the brain that the first, artery, the first aneurysm is on controls your ability to speak. <laughs> and I thought, why in the hell didn't they tell me this before the 88 campaign? Uh, it could have saved us all a lot of trouble. You know what I mean? This health scare kept him away from the Senate for seven months. Well, in the 1980s, Joe Biden was very rigorous. He was only 45, 46 years old, and he ran for president. Biden's campaign for president did not go well, and he dropped out in late 1987. Shortly thereafter, he suffered uh, the first of two serious brain aneurysms. And uh, the wow. first one was a bleeding aneurysm that was very bad. And uh, I believe he was even given the last rites by a Catholic priest. And Biden spent, I think, nine or 10 months in recovery. He was absent from the Senate. Um, when he returned, almost everyone who knew him detected differences. Uh, the aneurysms were in the part of the brain that control inhibitions. And Biden had always been gregarious and, you know, a hail fellow well met. But afterwards, there seemed to be a change in his personality. I've talked specifically to people who worked in the Senate at the time, to a former senator. Um, he, some of this unusual behavior that's been remarked, you know, the sniffing of uh, girls' hair, uh, this incident that Bernie Sanders recalls, where as they were on a stage back, uh, were backstage waiting to go out on a debate platform, uh, Biden started rubbing his back. Um, Biden uh, making inappropriate comments to women or children. Uh, Biden saying the strangest things about ethnic groups, attempts at ethnic humor. All of that is past the time when Biden had these aneurysms. And they were always... All of that was post-aneurysm. Like after the aneurysm, that was when it started acting weird like this. All right. It's very sad laughed at is, oh, that's just our crazy Uncle Joe and his eccentricities. But I think they go directly back to the time when he had these two aneurysms. He had an heroic recovery. Most people would have died. 
uh, but he didn't. He bottled back and has remained productive and useful. But those things can have a long stand, standing effect, and they can accelerate the onset of dementia and other problems later in your life. But of course, we don't know much about this because the physicians at the time aren't talking, and the White House physicians uh, from today uh, don't even mention this, don't discuss any possible lingering effects, and uh, it's the media has more or less not followed uh -huh. up on it. I myself am old enough to have had lunch and breakfast with the old Joe Biden before his aneurysms, and I can tell you he was a different person. The toll of Biden's age is becoming apparent, and his deterioration is clear for the world to see. A very real conversation is now being had about his ability to lead. And one of the main issues facing Democrats, among quite a long list, is there is no obvious successor to Joe Biden. Of course, a general rule of thumb under an ailing president is that the vice president could step up as a replacement. But with Kamala Harris extremely unpopular, insiders could have other plans for her. Kamala Harris is not viewed as a successful vice president. Her popularity ratings are below that of Joe Biden, nah. which averages about 41 or 40%. Nobody wants her. And she is not viewed as ready for prime time by many key Democrats. The problem, of course, is that she was picked as what we call a threefer. She is black, but she's also of... of Man, y'all better stop that nonsense, man. She, does this look black to you? The Indian subcontinent. Uh, She's Indian. Nothing black about this one. Stop it. Just stop. Extraction. And she's a woman. She's the first female vice president and the first black vice president and the first Indian vice president. So to move her aside is, is a hard lift. And the consensus is that if Biden were not running, she would run for president. And because of the fact that go for Biden to this, <laughs> that's like from the like from the fry pan into the fire. No, no. Over 60 percent of Democratic primary voters are either women or minorities that she would have a good shot at the nomination. And the Democrats fear that she's a Joe Biden with all his cognitive decline is still a hundred times better than Kamala or K Kamala or whatever you want to call it. He's, he's by far better than that one. You guys don't, don't even think about it, man. What we are seeing from the media with Joe Biden's decline is that they do not want to ask any questions and the White House is quick to shut any that do emerge down. I will leave that there. Looking at, I'm asking. Well, isn't, a it, isn't that isn't that what it's important as a reporter? Don't you think it's? She's always so apprehensive against the the people that want to ask meaningful questions. They have certain journalists that they give their time to because they know those ones are going to ask them little baby soft nonsense questions. But the ones that really ask them hard questions, they never pick them. It's important what Americans care about. But my I'm, question just saying, was, I'm just saying that is something that Americans want. Isn't let that him ask his question. That they have a leader that's going to deliver for them. Your proposition may or may not be true, but it's not responsive no, to think, my question. I think it's very true. You're asking, no, I know what your question is. You're asking me if we're going to change anything from here, if the chief of staff has asked for to change anything from here. And, and here's the thing, here's the thing. We are not. Things happen. Other presidents have had similar situations, as you know, and I'm not sure you've rep reported on the last president who's had a similar situation. And so look, things happen. This is a president that delivers and will continue to deliver for the American people, and that's what he cares about. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> the president um, planned to serve all eight years. <laughs> I'm not, I'm just not going to get ahead of the president. That's something for him to decide. I'm just not going to get ahead of it. And we're, there's a 2024 uh, campaign, anything related to that, I would refer you to that. He can't run again. There is a level of transparency required when it comes to the health of the president. Each year we are issued a report on their health by the White House physician. But as questions about Biden's health continue to be raised, the American people and frankly the world need to know the true scale of Joe Biden's health issues. And Biden makes it hard to ask questions. He almost never has a one-on-one -on -one interview with a reporter anymore. It's usually a friendly reporter, if at all. He almost never holds, holds full-scale news conferences. And every weekend, almost, it seems he retreats to Delaware, uh, his home there. He's too old. And uh, that's a secure area. 
where there are no visitor logs. We don't know who sees him. We don't know if he gets extra medical attention there. Uh, again, this is all speculation, but it's speculation based on the very unusual habits of this president. Certainly many Democrats who are friendly to him ideologically don't want him to run because the risk is too great. Uh, what if he, he has to debates, you know, there will be at least three debates. What if there are three debates uh, with his Republican opponent and he has a brain freeze and is an inarticulate? What if he falls in trips during a- They're not gonna let him have a debate. They just roll him out, roll him back in. They're not going to let him have a debate because they control everything. Are, are they not right now trying to uh, arrest Donald Trump or something? Their main opposition. They're using every power they have at their disposal to make sure that they win this thing without without doing much at all. So he might not even have one debate. A critical moment when the cameras are there. Uh, and he'll still win if that's what the kingmakers want when it comes to the media it is always one rule for the left and one rule for the rest of course during trump's presidency his mental and physical fitness was both poked fun of and forensically examined day after day after day the new york times never missed the chance to call him out what Trump's speech says about his mental fitness. Cognitive test Trump took may have been undermined by publicity, doctors warn. Trump's walk down ramp at West Point raises new health questions. So the day after Joe Biden's latest fall, well, wouldn't you expect a large concern about Joe Biden's health? <laughs> Quote, embarrassing moments are not uncommon for presidents who spent much of their tenure in front of the cameras. Yep, just another day of unbiased. If you think you have a news media organization in the West, you just either you're dumb or you're just purposely being dumb. These are propaganda arms of the government. They are not news networks. They don't do journalism at all. They do narrative pushing. That's not journalism. That's propaganda. And we, we in the West are the most propagandized group of people in the world. The rest of the world laugh at us. Leave your country, go to another country, preferably third world country, and see the way they look at you. Because you go there all high, all high and mighty thinking you're the, you know, from the first world country, you're the bomb or whatever. Those people just look at you like, look at this idiot. I asked journalism at the New York Times. But the media have a duty of care to report and raise questions around the health of the commander-in-chief. The decline of the president is real and it's plain for all to see.